soft spoken we're going to be reading Peter Rabbit and I thought that we could pick out a story from this beautiful book full of fairy tales that I got for Christmas yes okay as you can see we have quite a few new friends here I have brought out my reading his book and things are gonna go so well and it's gonna be such a lovely story but also right here in the back we have my jingly fawn and we have my little vintage teddy bear so I must show you before you leave all right okay and if you can hear something else in the back It's too much, and would you prefer whispering, whispering, whispering of this reading book or soft spoken? I'm more privy to whispering, I suppose, but I will do a bit of a mix to please everyone. Here we have Peter. a good story reader so thinking I might read a bit and then show you I think that is the go-to move so here on the first page we have what I suppose would be Peter Rabbit along with this farmer of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Miss Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. <gasps> Poor father. Now run along and don't get into the mischief. I am going out raised if you think anybody listened. You can see Mother Rabbit there with all of her little babies. And in the back, there is Peter. Then, old Miss Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. I don't know what a currant bun is, but I'm sure it's lovely. Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, who are good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the cake. First he ate some lettuces, and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes, and then feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, who should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Naughty rabbit. He should know better. Here we have him. Just eating away. Eating away at those carrots. My, my. Wait till you see this picture. <laughs> Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Was most dreadfully frightened. 
He rushed all over the garden where he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of the shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. I didn't even know he had shoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately ran into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Look how tiny they are. Go, Peter, go. Leave. Leave your jacket. Your life is more important than a jacket. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. In the watering can. Let's see. All right. But Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work, as he should. Hop, hop, hopping away. Run, Peter. It's like that old song, Run, Rabbit, Run. Oh, he sat in this one. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to our family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Poor where he hopped about and said lippity 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 Let's see what happens next. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scratch, 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 scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently nothing happened. He came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. 
The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Screech, scratch, screech, in his garden. Peter's almost home. How exciting. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime, but Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. How cozy. Look at how cozy. There he is. Ever so cozy tucked in. He was tucked away to bed, and everything was all right. The naughty little rabbit just lost his coat. His coat and his shoes, I never knew he had shoes. But I suppose it is possible, so. Happy spring. It is spring now. Look at these little eggs I have. Let's go. jingles. You can see. He's got his little horns right there. Yes. I don't want to move him too much because he jingles very loudly. So I'll set him back here for you. He's back there now with Peter. And then we have Mr. Teddy. Monsieur Teddy. In Grandma's sweater. Grim, we have Snow White and other Grimm's fairy tales. I will just open it up. And there's a special secret about this book, too. I'll read all of the stories we have from the index, and then you can let me know what story we'd like to read. I 
gonna read Snow White Snowdrop. That's number one. Number two, it'll just keep going all those numbers. <laughs> Snow White and Rose Red. That was hard to say. Rose Red. Number three, Sleeping Beauty, Briar Rose. Four, Cinderella, Ash Puddle. Number five is The Goose Girl. Number six is Rapunzel. Seven is Rumpelstiltskin. Eight, Hansel and Gretel. Nine, Fisherman and his wife. Ten, the valiant little tailor. Eleven, little riding hood, little red cap. Twelve, mother hole or holly. Thirteen, the golden goose. Fourteen, the twelve huntsmen. Fifteen, the frog prince. Sixteen, the wolf and seven little kids. 17, the traveling musicians. 18, 12 dancing princesses. 19, Hans and Luck. 20, the elves and the shoemaker. So, you let me know, and I'm going to decide which one we will read right now, okay? Even the back is beautiful. It's just beautifully tailored, honestly. I love this. Alright, I flipped to a random page. It landed on number 11, Little Red Riding Hood, or Little Red Cap. Come, Little Red Riding Hood, here's a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Take them to your grandmother, she's ill and weak, and they will do her good. Once upon a time, there was a dear little girl who was loved by everyone who looked at her, but most of all, by her grandmother, and there was nothing that she would not have given it to the child. Once she gave her a little cap of red velvet, which suited her so well that she would never wear anything else, so she was always called Little Red Riding Hood. One day, her mother said to her, Come, Little Red Riding Hood. Here is a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Take them to your grandmother. She is ill and weak, and they will do her good. Set out before it gets hot, and when you are going, walk nicely and quietly, and do not run off the path, or you may fall and break the bottle, and then your grandmother will get nothing. And when you go into her room, don't forget to say good morning, and don't peep into every corner before you do it. I will take great care, said Little Red Riding Hood to her mother, and gave her hand on it. The grandmother lived out into the wood, half a league from the village, and just as Little Red Riding Hood entered the wood, a wolf met her. Red Riding Hood did not know what a wicked creature he was. He was not afraid of him at all. Good day, Little Red Riding Hood, he said. Thank you kindly, wolf. Wither away so early, Little Red Riding Hood. To my grandmother's. What have you got in your apron? Cake and wine. Yesterday was baking day, so poor sick grandmother is to have something good to make her stronger. Where does your grandmother live, Little Red Riding Hood? A good quarter of a league further in the wood. Her house stands under the three large oak trees the nut trees are just below. You surely must know it, replied Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf thought to himself, what a tender young creature. What a nice plump mouthful. She will be better to eat than the old woman. I must act craftily so as to catch both. So he walked for a short time by the side of Little Red Cap, and then he said, See, Little Red Riding Hood, how pretty the flowers are here. Why do you not look around? Cunning wolf. I need to show you the picture. Stalking about. Alright. Let's continue on. As you can see. 
I believe that, too, you do not hear how sweetly the little birds are singing. You walk gravely along as if you are going to school, while everything else out here in the wood is merry. Little Red Riding Hood raised her eyes, and then she saw the sunbeams dancing here and there through the trees, and pretty flowers growing everywhere, she thought. Suppose I take Grandmother a fresh nosegay. That would please her, too. It is, too, so early in the day that I shall still get there in good time. And so she ran from the path into the wood to look for flowers. And whenever she had picked one, she fancied that she saw a still prettier one farther on, and ran after it, so she got deeper and deeper into the Meanwhile, the wolf ran straight to the grandmother's house and knocked at the door. Who is there? Little Red Riding Hood, replied the wolf. She is bringing cake and wine. Open the door. Lift the latch, called out the grandmother. I am too weak and cannot get up. The wolf lifted the latch. The door sprang open, and without saying a word, he went straight to the grandmother's bed and devoured. Then he put on her clothes, dressed himself in her cap, laid himself in bed, and drew her curtains. Little Red Riding Hood, however, had been running about picking flowers, and when she had gathered so many that she could carry no more, she remembered her grandmother and set out on that way to her. She was surprised to find the cottage door standing open. And when she went into the room, she had such a strange feeling that she said to herself, Oh dear, how uneasy I feel today. And at other times, I like being with grandmother so much. She called out, Good morning, but received no answer. So she went to the bed and drew back the curtains. There lay her grandmother, with her cap pulled far over her face and looking very strange. Oh, grandmother, she said, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my child, was the reply. But grandmother, what big eyes you have, she said, the better to see you with, my dear. But grandmother, what large hands you have, the better to hug you with. Oh, but grandmother, what a terrible big mouth you have, the better to eat you with. And scarcely had the wolf said this, with one bound, he was out of the bed and swallowed up Red Riding Hood. When the wolf had appeased his appetite, he lay down again in the bed, fell asleep, and began to snore very loud. The huntsman was just passing the house and thought to himself how the old woman was snoring. I must see if she wants anything. So he went into the room and when he had came to the bed, he saw that the wolf was lying in it. Do I find you here, you old sinner? <laughs> said he. I have long sought you. Then just as he was going to fire at him, it occurred to him that the wolf might have devoured the grandmother, and that she might still be saved. He did not fire, but took a pair of scissors and began to cut open the belly of the sleeping wolf. When he had made two snips, he saw the little red hood shining, and then he made two snips more, and the little girl sprang out crying. Ah, how frightened I have been! How dark it was inside that wolf! And after that, the aged grandmother came out alive also. There's more. close his belly and open the door and that is underneath the bed right beside inside very cool Red Riding Hood however quickly fetched great stones with which they filled the wolf's belly 
and when he awoke, he wanted to run away, but the stones were so heavy that he collapsed at once and fell. Dead. <laughs> then all three were delighted. The huntsman drew off the wolf's skin and went home with it. The grandmother ate the cake and drank the wine which Red Riding Hood had brought and revived. But Red Riding Hood thought to herself, As long as I live, I will never by myself leave the path to run into the wood when my mother has forbidden me to do so. It was also related that once when Red Riding Hood was again taking cakes to the old grandmother, another wolf spoke to her and tried to entice her from the path. Red Riding Hood, however, was on her guard and went straight forward on her way and told her grandmother that she had met the wolf and that he had said good morning to her but with such a wicked look in his eyes that if they had not been on the public road she was certain he would have eaten her up. Well, said the grandmother, we will shut the door that he may not come in. Soon afterwards the wolf knocked and cried, Open the door, Grandmother. I am Little Red Riding Hood and bringing you some cakes. But they did not speak or open the door. So the grey beard stole twice and thrice round the house and at last jumped on the roof, intending to wait until Red Riding Hood went home in the darkness. He wanted to steal after her. But the grandmother saw what was in his thoughts. In front of the house was a great stone roof. So she said to the child, Take the pail, Red Riding Hood. I made some sausages yesterday, so carry the water in, which I boiled them to the trough. Red Riding Hood carried them until the great trough was quite full. That is a hard sentence. <laughs> then the smell of the sausages reached the wolf and he sniffed and peeped down and at last stretched out his neck so far that he could no longer keep his footing and began to slip and slipped down from the roof straight into the great trough and was drowned but red riding hood went joyously home and no one ever did anything to harm her ever again wearing the wolf, the first one. And here we have the second wolf. He's just <laughs> sniffing the sausages. He said, mmm, delicious, delicious. I hope you've enjoyed a little story time in this new setup. Let me know if the candle was a bit too much. If you don't like this setup, you're eating. You drink some water, you take care of yourself, you be kind to yourself, and come and see me next time.